गुड इवनिंग सो लेट्स स्टार्ट द सेशन द स्लाइड्स आर विजिबल यस सर सो वेलकम टू द वीक सेवन ऑफ द लाइव इंटरेक्टिव सेशन ऑफ द फैब्रिकेशन टेक्निक्स फॉर माइंड बेस्ड सेंसर्स क्लिनिकल परस्पेक्टिव been taught by professor hardik jit and pandya of iisc bangalore and the pmrf teaching assistant vikas pandey from iit jodhpur this is a brief about me and uh, this is the youtube channel where you will find the recordings of all the classes okay so moving uh, before going to questions if you have any questions uh, like if you have any doubt or question related to things taught you are free to ask no sir no okay. so let's move to questions for the measurement of mechanical properties of tissue what method tool or equipment among the following are used micro manipulator afm fsm stereo microscope or interdigitated electrodes remember it is talking about mechanical properties of tissue Yes. Any idea? Stereo microscope. Okay. With the uh, AFM. Okay, AFM. Okay. And any other? What does a microscope do? No, actually, microscope will not be there because it is used to view it. it. For, yeah, it is. It can be used even for the optical properties, not for the mechanical properties, right? So this is not there. AFM is there. How AFM is there? Do you remember the uh, like uh, how in uh, how AFM works? What is the principle of AFM? Any idea about it? So, oh. these are the two tools which are actually relevant here so let's talk about afm first then we will talk about micro manipulator okay so afm certainly in all these uh, a microscope is there that is for sure okay but in an afm there is a cantilever tip that moves over the surface and like this is the tip uh, moving over the surface so when it is dipped it will go whenever a like a high structure comes it will go up and a laser is being sent on this sent over this uh, the back of the cantilever and the reflection is being detected and this reflection will change according to the position of the cantilever so if it is going up down this uh, photo detector will dif like see different amount of things like uh, different uh, the surface of it okay so we are talking about mechanical properties this will also show us the uh, am i audible okay. i think there is some delay uh, is there a delay from my side like uh, in the slides and You're audible. okay fine yes so, yes So what happens is that yes, you are audible as well as slides are also visible. Okay, okay. So what happens is that now uh, this this uh, this way we can find the mechanical property like stress as well as uh, the surface morphology of the material. Similarly, a micro manipulator is something where a needle or, or a spatula kind of structure is used to prick under a microscope it is used to touch the tissue or the analyte okay using this also 
we can have a idea about the mechanical property how is it uh, like it is it tough it has elasticity or not this thing so these are the two methods micro manipulator and afm those are used to take uh, measure the <coughs> measure the mechanical properties of tissues okay fine fsm stereo micro stereo microscope is simply a microscope that has two like two objective or two eye pieces okay and interdigitated electrode we can use for electrical properties fine this these two are for optical properties or to view them simple microscope we can see large objects fsm we can go for smaller objects okay any doubt or confusion in this no sir okay. okay now consider the following statement elasticity of normal epithelial tissues remember if epithelial tissues is less than the cancerous epithelial tissues is it true or false what do we mean by epithelial tissues any idea no sir no sorry if it, whenever we talk about epithelial tissues it is it can be part of it like any body part that is the upper portion or the outer portion is actually the epithelial surface tissue. surface yeah so surface does not only mean the skin or the outer surface even if we have a vein right outside will if it be epithelial tissue as well as in inside the last part the outer surface that will also be an epithelial tissue so inside outside like covering of all the organs as well as our body it is by epithelial tissues okay so it is saying that uh, if we are having a normal epithelial tissue our body's epithelial tissue as well as some tissue that is cancerous like that has become cancerous which one will be more elastic normal only sir normal will be elastic but here what it is saying the question is less than so it is a false statement it is false right so it should be is more, more right is more than it should be more yeah it is more than the cancerous epithelial tissues right okay yes. now for the experiment to understand the electrical properties of tissues to prevent whether the tissue is bending or malignant which of the electrical parameters of the tissue were plotted and reported to predict the state of the tissue Do you remember anything the graph it is asking about what graph was plotted do you know uh, the difference between bending and malignant to, uh, tissue or tumor it's it's a uh, uh, like uh, uh, abnormal like uh, not uh, normal tissues right or it just started hmm. malignant means cancerous tissue only right both of them are cancer in some way okay yeah but uh, 
they can also be classified in two type okay bending is something that uh, you can say less dangerous okay and mm-hmm. malignant mm-hmm. is something more dangerous why yeah. because bending will be at a place like it will affect one area okay that is becoming cancerous that is fine but when we are talking about malignant what happens is that such tissues spread they are not at one place like uh, i i don't have exact uh, like uh, knowledge about the, this field biology okay but uh, what i remember is that uh, if we have some uh, small shape like uh, what you say mole and uh, these things they are also tumors okay but they are at one place they don't spread or they don't uh, get into the blood flow and go to other places right whereas uh, like there are some tumors which will spread like once they grow they will spread through the blood stream or other sources okay so there are two type paining is something that uh, if you take it out it is gone right but malignant is something that uh, will spread if it is at the beginning it is not yet spread you can isolate it otherwise you will have to like find it out where where till what place it has spread okay so how we were able to differentiate by seeing the electrical properties of this are you getting the question yes sir i'm getting i'm just confused about the impedance and the resistance only because it, if we are talking about the phase angle then impedance must be there yes because in case of uh, resistance so, there is no phase angle that, at all uh, so d will be there log of impedance as well as log of phase angle okay. or c, c or d some c, log of impedance and phase it is angle. c log of impedance and phase angle yes why we are not taking log of phase angle because phase angles are limited like if we see mathematically the magnitude of phase angles is limited so we can plot it very well and if you have both the parameters in log the graph will be very different okay so an impedance has uh, a lot when we are using log na uh, just yes. keep in mind that uh, whenever we have uh, different magnitudes like the magnitudes are varying like uh, you can have something in the range of 10 then it is more 100 yeah 100 like in times something is increasing in number times or to the power something okay in that case we use log so that we can reduce and we we can still see the uh, way it is going but we can directly uh, like we will see that how the magnitude is increasing like 10 100 1000 it is plotted like that right so we are plotting the power like how much increase is there are you getting how many times yes yes the multiplication is there okay with the phase angle the change of the phase okay okay now next question which of the following breast lesions are non invasive malignancies they spread but they are not invasive in the sense they will not try to go to different places and like keep on increasing and this are you aware with all these breast lessons uh, no sir no no okay. i'm not okay to uh, okay i put that in place okay so in fact uh, the quest- answer is in the question itself you see invest this is written as invasive okay other two are non invasive fine but let's see what they are okay so when we have invasive lobular lobular carcinoma what happens is that we have this uh, lobes like uh, normal lobules mammary lobules we say right in it 
the tissue is growing uh, like gen in general words like uh, for someone who is not from this uh, background of medicine and all, for for us like what we can say is that such tissue which we cannot control like how they are growing or how they differentiate they are cancerous tissues right so if in this uh, lobule the uh, tissues start growing and keep grow keep growing and then they break out and spread okay this is something that is invasive like it will spread from here like it will break so tissue will grow break and then it it will get into the blood stream and all and it will try to expand its area okay this will be an invasive time are you getting it yes yes okay just the second type like lobular lobular carcinoma that is this is also inside the lobule okay it is growing it can affect that area okay like you see it is filling in okay but it will not break out and it will not break out and spread to other places okay it will have a localized effect okay and in such cases it is very easy like you can remove it okay then is ductal carcinoma so these lobules are connected by a duct mammary duct okay sometimes the lobe lobe is not affected but the duct will have some cancerous or abnormal cells that are growing and filling it okay these these are ductal carcinoma like they are in the duct or the tube okay they also don't spread like they are not going out they will just try to block the, the tube is the some structure like this will form okay and block something like or one one duct is blocked maybe okay but it will not break out and spread okay and there are many more classification of this okay so which one is invasive invest okay non invasive sorry yeah which one non -invasive. of these are non non invasive so the ones that don't spread right that that don't spread like they are not breaking don't out spread. yeah invasive is one that will break out and spread right yes okay now let's come to uh, next question the base resistance value of chromium gold id structure with the spacing of 10 micron and 50 microns are x ohm and y ohm respectively I think a similar question we did in the previous class also. Yes, last time. So yeah. there won't be in no change in the base resistance. Yes, no change in the base resistance because the base resistance is by default very high. So if you are using 10 or 50 micron or you increase it, the base resistance will still remain the same. Fine. Sometimes yes. uh, we keep on repeating so that uh, those things become very clear in mind right okay in the experiment that measures the electrical properties of tissues evaluate whether the following statement is true or false for the equivalent circuit representation for the experiment the tissue is modeled as a resistance and the solution in it is in pbs so like uh, the tissue is dissolved in pbs solution is modeled as a combination of resistance and capacitance in parallel is it true or false yes it is true how uh, because just now we said that uh, sorry tissue is tissue is modeled as a resistance and the solution in Yes. 
any idea yeah thinking on it because tissue will have its uh, like different layers so it will act as a resistance and when you are putting it in a solution so because it is for measuring the elasticity right what we are doing no here it is about electrical impedance for electrical measuring the electrical yes. properties yes electrical properties then electrical properties so still impedance will sorry sir no idea it is saying that see like when we are flowing current through to uh, like something okay let's assume this is something we don't know the question mark okay we are trying to flow some current through it a simple setup okay so if some current is flowing through it okay so this part what will this part have okay if some current is flowing through it it will have resistance resistance yeah is it only resistance that it can have it may have a capacitance also sir because paralytic capacitances are there for the resistance hmm. so we can say that it has some impedance it impedance yes okay so what we do in electronics or electrical engineering is that we try to model this as some equivalent resistance and capacitance or something like that okay something mm -hmm. in parallel mm -hmm. something in series so how is this modeled it is saying is modeled as a resistor tissue is modeled as a resistance so tissue is being represented by some resistance and the solution is being modeled as a combination of resistance okay, so and capacitance in parallel let's say Is it true? Sorry, I just uh, uh, like um, uh, interpreted is wrongly. I because I thought it's a tissue is modeled. So tissue can be modeled as a combination of uh, resistance and capacitance in parallel. But now mm -hmm. they are saying tissue is modeled as only resistance and a solution. So is it true or false? Hello, are you saying something? Like I cannot hear. You. No, no, I'm not okay. saying anything. I'm just thinking on that. Yeah, sure. Take your time. No idea, so sorry. I'm not like confused. Hmm. The thing is that uh, remember there was one question before this where using the impedance we were able to find the difference between the different kind of tissues. Correct. Right. So when we are talking about impedance and as well as phase end, yeah. Capacitance or inductance will be there for sure. Right? Yes. And the difference we are like, let us deduce it by going the other way around, right? That if we are uh, getting some impedance, so certainly there should be a capacitance or inductance. Okay. So first part itself becomes doubtful, right? It cannot be only a resistance, either a resistance or capacitance in par uh, parallel or series. This is something for sure, right? The second thing is that yes. the second thing is that we are actually having uh, this solution, and if if the solution itself act as an impedance, it will have other effect. Okay, and actually this PBS 
is being selected because it can be modeled very simply as resistance okay so overall what we will get is that we will have resistance and capacitance in parallel this will be tissue and this will be the pvs solution fine yes yes got it like uh, from previous questions also we can have some idea okay so this is false this I is the, yeah opposite okay for measurement of electrical properties of a tissue a device is fabricated what are the process steps to be followed okay so these are the ones this ha paper cleaning oxide deposition then metal deposition to fabricate heater followed by metal deposition to fabricate id id and in between one thing is missing actually after this uh, again oxide deposition will be there yes yes to isolate them i think this is uh, something we have done earlier also, right yes yes yeah. so oxide deposition we are doing two times why because we are we have to uh, first we have to isolate the heater from the silicon below as well as we have to isolate the heater and the id pattern they don't sort right any yes. doubt in this okay evaluate whether the following statement is true or false with respect to device for evaluating the efficacy of immunotherapy drugs okay for growing the spheroid the cell were grown in ultra low attachment 96 well plates is it true or false first yes uh, it is true yeah this is true but uh, what is this immunotherapy drug Yeah, like uh, when you will have the immunotherapy drugs, so the cancerous cell will, uh, like uh, will get or the person will have uh, uh, like ability to fight with those cancer cells. Yeah. So the uh, therapy tries to activate our immune system to fight with the yeah cancer yeah. cell. Okay, so this is. True. Like this is to check whether that drug is working or not. Okay. For the microfluidic chip, for evaluating the efficacy of immunotherapy therapy drug that was covered in the course, evaluate which of the following statement is true. The if efficacy of the drug was evaluated using electrical sensing modality. The cancerous cell were introduced in the form of spheroids in the matrix cell. Which of the following is correct? This is something uh, you must have seen in the course. Yes, anyone? Any answers for this? the cancerous cell were not introduced as uh, spheroids in matrizel okay the efficacy of drug was evaluated using the electrical sensing modality okay so for the microfluidic chip am i audible yes sir yes sir okay. for the microfluidic chip For evaluating efficacy of immunotherapy drug, which kind of spheroids among the following were used? Human breast cancer cell spheroids, forty-one mouse breast cancer cell spheroids, melanoma spheroids, or none of the above? Yes. any answers for this hmm. 
this way that is why you see yeah they are like mouse breast cancer cells and then uh, they were introduced as the spheroids and on them the immunotherapy drugs were tested okay okay now let's come to some questions which don't have which don't have options how do you measure the electrical impedance in electromechanical phenotyping of breast cancer using flexible mems any idea on this yes anyone hello you can try even if you are wrong not an issue yeah yeah mr arvind you can also try yes any anything you remember remember a cone kind of structure and then tissue is kept here and below then there is another another electrode and a voltage is applied between this and the current is measured current flowing through this is measured so how do we measure it properly like this is the structure this cone kind of electrode structure was used to measure uh, do you remember this structure from the yes Plus. yes yes okay so this is so are all the electrodes of this being used to measure or only some of them are used So let's come to the this next question. Why do we need zigzag pattern for gold electrode for this? This to like, uh, for to avoid the stress on the on the device itself. Yes, device it's, that's why it is a zigzag pattern. It's a zigzag pattern. And are we using all the electrodes of this, or we avoid are using stress. some? Uh, we are using uh, eight electrodes now. Eight. Yes, I guess all are required. Uh, mostly we are using two, like I said here also. No? Like I have two. One two. They said here, yes, yes. yes, and one electrode here. So we are using actually two electrodes only to measure. And this shape is like we can use any two electrodes. Okay. okay yeah and the shape is to uh, like sustain the stress that is happening during the measurement okay okay how do you sense the elect the mechanical property like remember uh, we talked earlier also i think uh, two or three weeks ago that we are interested in three properties electrical mechanical and thermal okay so electrical we have seen as well as like uh, how do you sense the mechanical properties of tissues using piezoresistive micro cantilever a cantilever structure like this was made in which there is a su8 tip right completely released cantilever that means it is straight without any st stress and how do we uh, compensate the stress do you remember how we were compensating the stress to make it straight 
uh, by adding the another layer uh, of that uh, uh, oxide layer uh, sorry oxide layer we already have then on top of it we are putting yes. uh, chromium go yes i just do remember that we had discussed it uh, one chromium and nickel nic okay i think arvind ji is trying to say something yes please um, maybe yes uh, silicon nitrate or something it was coated with, um, yes. on the top very, very true. so on sio2 we were putting silicon nitrate so that it compensates the stress that was being generated by sio2 and that is why that cantilever become straight and without any stress okay so how do we sense the mechanical property of tissue using this micro cantilever the su8 tip we are covering with uh, chrome gold and this one we are covering with sio2 is there and then on top of it we are putting si3 and for silicon nitride clear so how do we sense the mechanical properties so the mechanical property that we want to find is the stiffness okay and when we will press the tissue uh, press on the tissue no the tissue press on the tissue the P, the resistance of the piezoelectric cortex will change why Be because the stress will lead to change in the resistance and using this we can measure the mechanical property the stiffness of the tissue if it is stiff like uh, with for different stiffness level there will be different level of stresses being generated fine any confusion in this no sir in electrical characterization of tissues using interdigitated electrodes in su8 well so we have su8 well and this we have like first electrodes then su8 well okay like such kind of structure okay they are all connected the sensitivity of 10 micrometer spaced id is better than 30 micrometer spaced id is it true or false it is false why because even though you are changing the that uh, space mm. so the resistance yeah. is not at changing right base resistance is not changing base resistance is not changing fine anything it is talking about sensitivity okay okay yes uh, arvind ji uh, do you like to then true yes sir it's true sir uh, why in the class it was discussed yeah So um, the main thing is why. Um, the sensitivity can be measured by using the uh, two electrodes which is spaced apart, and uh, if the ten micrometers is very close, that sends more of the tissue, more sensitivity to the tissue. If it is the distance, um, the sensitivity will be decreases. I thought. So uh, we can assume this as a. array of sensors like this uh, let me change the color okay so we can assume that this is a sensor this is a sensor this is a sensor each of them are sensors okay so if we have small and more number of sensors okay we will have more sensitivity if we are going for 10 micrometer spaced ids actually we have more number of sensors in that each sensor will have some sensitivity and overall the sensitivity of this whole array of sensors 
we can like if you look closely it is array of many sensors and the purpose of id is to increase this like increase the sensitivity itself when we have just two electrodes the same thing could have been done using just two electrodes connecting to positive and negative and putting the tissue in between okay it will still have resistance we can still measure the current through it but what will happen is that it is one single okay one single sensor we can see okay and that also it have a uh, like uh, there is there will be more resistance okay so the change is less visible like if you have something which is already at this level and you are changing say like something say 10 ohm is there and the change is say uh, 1 ohm okay so and now when we have less like uh, say uh, a value which is 5 ohm and the change that is occurring on it is 1 ohm so in which case the change is more visible the one with uh, from 10 ohm to going to 11 ohm or 10, uh, 10 with 1 ohm difference or from 5 ohm to 6 ohm which one will be more significant like how uh, which one will give better sensitivity this are you getting my point like uh, let me click okay let me drop it okay we have something that uh, let's say we have a graph and we are saying that the current was flowing like this then it changed here okay and then it come back so this is the sensitivity this with respect to say this is x and this point is y okay x plus y okay now in another case we have this value the base value higher and then over it we have y okay so this is x plus 5 and then this is y okay and the sensitivity will be defined as uh, sorry, x plus y plus 5 right so sensitivity will be defined as the difference by the base value so in case one it will be y upon x and in the case two it will be y upon x plus five which is more one or two yes simple like if we simply see which value is more y by x or y upon x plus 5 <coughs> hello I'm audible. Yes, sir. The second one. Sir. Second one will be higher. Yes, sir. High sensitivity. How? If the denominator is more, uh, the value will be less. More. The same numerator, but the denominator is more. So we are dividing it with a higher value, so it will become smaller. Na? Okay. Like okay, if we have uh, one upon four and we have one upon five, which one is higher? One upon four or one upon five? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I understood. Yeah. Like so, the thing is that when we have the 
Now, like for a smaller sensors, the change is more. Like change is more, uh, not more, but the same change is more uh, visible. Okay, and if we have an array of more such sensors, the overall change is very high. Like the changes, relative change is seen overall, and we will have better sensitivity when we have smaller, like less spaced ID. But along with that, some other factors will also come that uh, to make this it will be a bit cumbersome as well as well as we will have to make some design modifications now that is a different thing but having more number of uh, sensors or having less spacing will actually increase the sensitivity clear Now again, the question that we seen earlier also, what is immunotherapy and how do you test the efficacy of this immunotherapy drugs? Yes, any answers to this? Just we discussed that it activates the uh, the immune the immune system to the cancerous cell mm -hmm. or to fight with the cancerous cell. That is immunotherapy. Mm -hmm. And how do we check that uh, these drugs that we are trying to give for immunotherapy they are efficient yeah. or not? What is their efficacy? CD4 and CD8 ratio may be calculated. Um, as a killer cells is more means uh, the efficiency is more. Yes. So it is also known as PDL1 testing. Mm. Right. And like for every cell, there is a different kind of protein on the cancer cell. Okay. And also made the test measures the PDL1 in the tissue. With uh, then we can find that how much we were successful, right? The method for fabricating microfluidic chip for evaluating efficacy of the immunotherapy drug is a one mass process, two mass process, three mass process, four mass process. The microfluidic chip. Is it a three mass processor? Why? Um, first mask is used to for uh, heater, micro heater arrangement. The second mask is used for uh, taking contacts. Maybe the third mask for uh, ID structure. Contacts and ID. Okay, contacts I didn't get. ID is fine, but what kind of contacts? Contacts and ID in general, uh, some people make in two steps, but uh, let us assume that we are doing it in one go because we have all continuous. Okay, the ID is contact, uh, connected directly to the contacts. Fine, so let's assume it as one. Okay, okay, so and uh, then any other step. Anyone else? Okay. So, what about the SU8 tank? Okay. I am not talking about the other like uh, hater and ID. I am just talking uh, like one mask is not the correct one. Yeah. Okay. So, what is being done on the SU uh, SIO2? We are using uh, spin coating the SU8 
to create the microfluidic area, like where we will put the tissue and all. We are exposing and developing. So one mask is being used here. Fine. This is to create the tank kind of pattern, the island kind of structure, right? Which we will reverse. How we will reverse? We will pour PDMS on it and then peel it off. Okay. And then we will use the PDMS, uh, like this PDMS cell will be put on the oxygen plasma, uh, like uh, on the glass, which already have this ID pattern and heater below it, right? The heater I missed. Let's say heater is there, okay? And then we have an ID pattern. So one is heater. The second one is ID pattern. The third one is this SU8, uh, like SU8 patterning, okay? So how many masks in total? In total, it will be three masks. This is one process. Along with that, there's two. So how many in total? Three, sir. Three. So three is correct, but this contact, like we are assuming that ID and contacts are being made at once. We are not making it different. We are using one mask to create the tank or the island structure, fine, in which we will be putting this uh, uh, fluid, the microfluid we have to evaluate, fine? Okay, okay, sir. So what is a immunomodulator used to block, like, what is the immunomodulator used to block the PD-1 immune checkpoint on T cell? Yes. Any answers to this? In biology, it is very easy. You just put an MT before it, and it is like something against it. So we are blocking this. So it is NTPD1. Okay. So what is the technique used to detect the CD4, CD8 rates in the blood? Like uh, Arvind, you said, right? About yes, CD, yes. CD4. And so what is the technique used to detect this ratio in the blood? Any answers to this? Just the name, we will discuss the details, not an issue. Immunotherapy drug. Uh... That's it, sir. No idea, sir. It's low cytometry. Do you remember the name? Yes, sir. So, like uh, CD4, the cells are the ones that fight against infection. CD8 cells can kill cancerous cells and other invaders. Okay. So, this technique, what it does is that it will have a laser, okay? So uh, the sing analyte that is uh, single cell or particles, as they flow through uh, different multiple lasers while suspended in a buffered solution, okay? Each particle is analyzed for how much scattering it does, 
okay like uh, every molecule have some biomarker so it can be in form of a chemical being released it can be in form of uh, some fluorescence behavior like in this case it is about how much scattering they can do okay and this fluorescent parameter is used to identify this ratio how much is the scattering of which light okay that will determine which one will which one is having more like which one is having what ratio okay we are interested in ratio only we are not interested in exact amount we just want in that how much proportion is cd4 and how much is cd8 okay so we see uh, like uh, suppose we are i don't exactly know the color like uh, let's say red and blue so how much of red is being reflected or dis dispersed or how much blue is being dispersed and overall checking this we will have a good idea about the ratio okay so this we can but this is being done in a way where this is uh, put in a buffer solution and it is being passed through that passed through those laser lights and then overall uh, after some time we will have like say 30 seconds or one minute we will check how much is the scattering and the ratio we can find from there fine now why do we prefer an in vitro patient centric dynamic platform over a static platform we have some static platform for testing drug efficacy and somewhere in vitro means it is outside the patient's body but a dynamic platform what can be the reason for this like uh, why a dynamic platform is preferred over a static platform for doing the drug if it, uh, testing the drug efficacy yes anyone there are in fact many i think yeah so many drugs can be tested um in the same time and see like our body is a dynamic thing right we have blood moving we have a lot of things moving when we are just taking out say we are taking blood or tissue and we are keeping it at a stagnant position okay and doing the testing the result of the testing is not that reliable like uh, when you have uh, like you are testing suppose let's suppose that uh, something that is designed to fly you are keeping it at one place and testing with some pressure and all okay it will be the best when you are able to simulate all other parameters okay like wind and all so this is very similar to that that uh, yeah. in our body the uh, like our body or the patient body there are different things going on okay and if we are going for a static platform all the parameters we cannot see or we will not be able to see the effect of all the parameters that is why dynamic platforms are being preferred in which we simulate how actually it will be in body body like situ situation or body like uh, platform outside the body fine so yes, there are some uh, advantages like physiological accuracy and the second which is uh, very rightly said by you is that enhanced predictive pre precision so we are able to get more better in uh, predictions okay as well as personalized medicine because uh, like according to space if we are going for some dynamic uh, platforms so suppose uh, some person has uh, some specific body parameters another one will have other uh, body parameters according to that person who whose analyte is there we can put those values in there and then it will be 
uh, like we will be able to get more personalized results like uh, the same medicine for the same uh, problem works differently for different persons okay so in this case uh, the doses and other things can be easily uh, like can be better known beforehand will be okay and then person, uh, personalized medicine is done pharmacokinesis and pharmacodynamics better understanding of drug effects that is part of that only drug interaction assessment how the drug will interact but, uh, between sometimes like someone is already taking some specific drugs or specific uh, medicines what is uh, the interaction between those okay and the digit progression study like without going into the body uh, like outside only we can see that how the uh, what will be the effect over time over a period of time what will be the effect of this drug on the disease fine okay so any doubts or any questions till now or anything else from the class you are free to ask yes no sir thank you no. yeah arvind ji you have some questions no sir so that was a very short class today i think yes okay okay so that's all for today see you in the next class okay so thank you